I've been doing science for, gosh, how long? Since 1990, 1990s is when I started my PhD. And I have a reputation for green fingers. <laughs> Things tend to work. Uh, I tend to, I do have failures, but by and large, I'm quite productive as a scientist. I always find it difficult to describe what I do because I've gone through a few changes since I started out. I began studying viruses in Seattle, and really nice little viruses that infect cats. So I felt that I was a virologist, which has a nice ring to it. <laughs> you notice I'm not wearing gloves. There's a real controversy in my field about whether you should wear gloves. Gloves is sort of a, an interesting thing. I mean, are you protecting your samples from you, or are you protecting yourself from the samples? So nothing I'm working here with here is toxic. And currently, I'm working on cell shape. So you might think to yourself, yeah, cells have a shape. And it's true. If you look in your body, you can like, if you look at your skin. Your cells form these really nice columnar um, sort of sheets. And if you look in your heart, the cells form these long, striated, beautiful spindle-shaped cells. And your blood cells are sort of flat disks. You've probably seen those beautiful pictures of blood cells tumbling around in, in the circulatory system. Beautiful sort of UFO-shaped things. And then you've got sort of T cells, the ones that fight off viruses. And these are lovely, round, sort of bobbly things. How do all these cells take up these different shapes? So that's what I wanted to find out. That's what we're doing here in the lab. In biology, you spend a lot of time either making tools or testing the tools that you make. It's two different mentalities. So what I'm doing now is I'm making tools. I'm literally genetically engineering some DNA constructs. And later, I get to have fun and play with them and see what they do in cells. So it's these two different mentalities. Making the tools is quite fun. It's, it's, it's almost, it's not brainless. It's an art. It's like gardening. You have to be really careful and really clean. And things don't always grow the way you want them to grow. And sometimes you have weeds, like, which is like fungus, for example. But um, it's really satisfying because you're literally cutting and pasting DNA, gluing it together, and hoping that it will grow. Um, this lab, the whole lab, is, it's a nice team of people. We're all, we're all studying why cells take on certain shapes, how these shapes change as an organism develops. We have lots of fruit flies in the lab over there. Nice little guys. Uh, they're a very good system for studying cell shape in a living organism. And I study cells outside of the body. I'm interested in cancer cells, so I study uh, human cells called HeLa. They have a beautiful shape. If you put them on plastic, growing in a dish, they're like fried eggs. They're really, really nice. They're just sort of lovely, am sort of amorphous fried eggs. They're like something out of a science fiction B movie. And what I can do, it's amazing. I can take, um, using a certain technique, I can knock down any gene I want. So we have about 25,000 genes in our body. I can knock one of those genes down, and some of them make the cells change shape. <laughs> so I can make my fried egg turn into a triangle, or a star shape, or, or get really long and thin or get really tiny and small just by knocking out one specific gene. So it's kind of cool. <laughs> Science has a lot of drudgery. And if you're not prepared to deal with failure <laughs> a lot, you probably shouldn't be a scientist. The thing about it is, every once in a while, you just discover something amazing. Uh, and something that no one else in the world knows. It happens quite a bit, actually. Just the other day, <laughs> I looked down the microscope and saw something that no one could possibly have known because I know for a fact that nobody's working on this particular gene and nobody's made the kind of tools that I've made to see this gene. And I saw something and I thought, I'm the only one in the world who's ever seen this. It's amazing. And maybe it's not that important. Maybe it's not going to cure cancer. But as a personal sort of moment, these are the things that keep you going.